normal development, there is a difference between like uh, the normal development and sustainable development because in the case of normal development, it is based on the mass scale industrialization. It hardly concerns with the environment or it never go in synchronous with the environment. It hardly concerns about the consequences of environment with this development. But the sustainable development, sustainable, in case of sustainable development, it's a new idea. Sustainable development, it always keep in mind of uh, the position of environment, how it affects environment. Maybe the industrialization is not that fast, but how it affects environment. For example, now you know you know that uh, the fossil fuels like petrol, diesel, that sort of like uh, petroleum-based products, harming our environment, harming our environment, and harming our you know like uh, and their the the global scenario because harming our it, it causes for the global warming and other other sort of thing. But you can't simply avoid it. It's not possible. You can't simply you know you can't simply uh, delete it. It's not possible because. But we are looking for other alter alternation. Alternation doesn't see, you can't simply use holes and other sort of thing anymore, like ox, ox cart and other in the, in, the, in the modern world. We need cars, we need bus, we need aeroplane, we need ships. For that, you need fossil fuels. But now the government is, every international government is looking for the fuel, fossil fuel harming our environment. So what they're doing that they're looking for alternate option, solar energy or, you know, like electric vehicles. Uh, or uh, uh, so that sort of al alternatives they are not because that sort of alternatives they they seen that that sort of alternative never negatively harming you no know, like uh, our sensitive environment or our sensitive drop it never adversely harming our globe it's not like fossil fuel fossil fuel is everywhere but fossil fuel negatively harming it's already proven because fossil fuel negatively harming our sensitive environment but at the same time now the all the governments are trying to promote electric vehicle for uh, hydrogen vehicle for that sort of alternative but that, that they are not affecting they are, they are not adversely affecting our environment as such fossil fuel so that's the the, the development paradigm and environmental movement because development the normal development naturally destroy our environment it led to environmental movements then as, as i already discussed the massive destruction of natural consequences you know that the the normal sort of development which happened in britain and later in the united states or in other western europe then uh, ussr in china then in the india this sort of normal industrial uh, you know industrial industri industrialization harm our environment it destroy our it may destroy even humanity so the it dest destroy environment so what's the consequences you know the landslides floods then the extreme heat so the heat waves so so, so many there are so, so many consequences is happening everywhere because uh, regular cyclones in, uh, in the various parts of oceans regular cyclones because it's all the effect of like uh, you know like uh, melting of uh, our you know melting of snow because like uh, in Antarctica and Arctic and other places melting of so it's all negatively you know like uh, affect our society it's affect humanity or in our blob in general so let's see that this point should be in your mind when we move to the the major environmental based human rights movements in India let's see first uh, there are I, 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 I would like to discuss Two major environmental movements in India. One is the Chipko movement, another one is Narmada Bachavan Andal. Let's see what's the Chipko movement. These two movements are regarded, there are several movements happened after that, Plachi Mara and other sort of, but these two movements are landmark in Indian history, especially in the in history of post independent India, because it's got you know, like a global attention, because it's got wider you know, like attention than Indians were more concerned about, like. Uh, concern about environment and how to protect our environment because it got more awareness okay let's see what's the chipko movement chipko movement first of all you have to understand chipko movement uh, happened in uttarakhand the modern day uttarakhand in 1970s in early 1970s this movement was led by sundaralal bahugana and chandi prasad but the chipko movement was led by sundaralal bahugana and chandi prasad but then the term what's the meaning of the term chipko in hindi chipko means embrace or hug then let's see then what's what's the you know like uh, what is this movement all about the chipko movement happened it took place in uh, uh, uh Gadwar region of uh, uttarakhand in the early 70s there is uh, some reasons behind it 
this movement started again is primarily again is privatization of forest land it started primarily again is privatization of forest land because in in those part in 50s and 60s as part of industrialization then uh, in the foothills of himalaya there there was wide scale massive deforestation so deforestation at the same time what government did that government tried to control villages to use forest goods in, in the name of various forest laws you know that british made several forest laws for protecting forests so in that in, in that in that background government tried to control common villages to use forest you know like a uh, trees forest forest trees for they are you know like a normal cooking purpose and other, other sort of thing because now then there was no gas on or that's sort of electric uh, you know electric cooking devices that sort of nothing was there so they normally use the timber for their cooking purpose but government try to restrict the villages for using for exploiting forest good for their own survival but at the same time you have to remember at the same time government is okay with privatizing land for big you know like uh, big companies big companies for industrial purpose government don't find any problem with that but at the same time government is restricting people for using forest you know like uh, trees for uh, their cooking purpose and other sort of thing so the the movement suddenly happened because the government was ready the government tried to privatize uh, certain sections of land for construct for making cricket bats to a particular company for making a cricket bat that company was based in allahabad allahabad based company for making cricket bats but just before that there was in the early 70s there is other incident also took place then uh, several landslides and flood happened in alagadanda valley alagadanda valley is part of the gudwal that's what that's 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 where uh, this movement took place so the, uh, there was flood and regular landslide took place in alagadanda valley because the people come into understanding they're coming to understanding that there is a massive development happening in different parts of very sensitive himalayan region that's why the landslides and floods is happening at the same time you know you have to mind we already discussed what the what other, some other things it's also happening on one side so then government decided to privatize certain certain section of forest land for constructing cricket for making cricket bat to a particular uh, allahabad based company at the same time there is restriction for common villages to use forest land so naturally the people really got agitated you have to keep in mind the floods took place two or three years back then regular landslides the people were very because they don't have the option so they came in big number again it's like a, this sort of like a government action because government is restricting them using forest land at the same time government don't have any issue with you know the big companies for exploiting the natural resources then the the massive participation movement they were the women participate in the movement the big way then both sandalal bahuguna and chandi prasad but they all both from the the gadwal region they led the movement so uh, they uh, they adopted the non violent satyagraha you know you remember the non violent satyagraha first introduced in india by gandhi again is during our independence movement so uh, bahuguna is basically a gandhian he was a freedom fighter so bahuguna what bahuguna did that he adopted he, he applied the gandhian method in in this you know in the, in, the, in this struggle because every time the you know like uh, loggers arrive for cutting tree but uh, what ladies do that they they the this is a see this is here you see uh, the ladies try to protect tree they do they, they stand like this this is a big tree they stand like this the here is a bahuguna they stand like this so the logger can they are completely helpless they can't cut tree because they if they want to cut if they have to cut tree they first have to you know the kill these ladies then only they can cut tree so the companies uh, they withdrew from the mission then the later this movement spread to other parts of uh, very other, other parts of uh, uttarakhand then bahuguna led it okay so he uh, that's why it's known as a chikkomam chikkom in hug here is a photo here is a bahuguna then let's see who was the bahuguna bahuguna was he, he he got he passed away recently due to covid three months back he passed away three months back due to covid sundarlal bahuguna was an environmentalist he was he began his career as a freedom fighter then he was a gandhian 
he believed in gandhi's principle he also believed in sustainable development he is from garhwal he is believed in sustainable development he is not the big fan of you know like dams and other sort of like uh, mass scale industrialization he was very concerned about so he he led the movement in front then gandhi and followers of satyagraha method then as then he he became a, by 19 then he this movement was successful so by 1980 the the movement the the, the bhogana was good enough he, he he was able to convince and then prime minister uh, indira gandhi about the economic sorry environmental consequences so he then uh, government become more concerned about more uh, environment then this movement was somehow successful so he become a global figure bhogana become a global figure especially in the environmental circle he became a global figure he is regarded as you know like as, as part of it he received lots of right like lots of prizes for example right livelihood award this award is not exactly for bhogana the right livelihood livelihood award uh, is known as alternate nobel prize it is known as alternate nobel prize this award offered by then offered by a swedish organization so it's but right livelihood award is also known as the alternate nobel prize but it's it has nothing to do with nobel prize except it's also uh, you know like offering from a student so uh, he got he got right livelihood award for his uh, service then uh, later government offered indian government offered him padma shri in 1987 but he rejected it uh, but later in 2009 he got uh, padma vibhushan government awarded him padma vibhushan so this is for the this is for this is enough for the common movement then i then i move to the next major environmental movement narmada bachao andolan this narmada bachao chipko movement happened to place in himalayan hills like uh, uh, in utragan garhwal region but it happens in uh, gujarat because it it is related with the you know like the the uh, chipko movement was related to forest but uh, narmada bachava nandolan is related with the protection of uh, protecting you know the narmada river let's see the narmada bachava nandolan bachavo protecting save narmada from uh, from from what from da- dams because this is for protecting the the so called hindu holy river narmada because narmada is a one of the holy river for hindus then uh, the, you have to remember that also into mind because the people in the narmada basin basin respect her because narmada is a big river it's like flows through uh, th- three uh, states maharashtra madhya pradesh and gujarat then this movement uh, this movement is again is making build because from the nehru's time onwards indian government had planned to build several dams in narmada river narmada is one of the big river it's not as big as ganga or brahmaputra but it's still a big river so the nehru from the time of nehru onwards there was planned to build you know like uh, uh several dams both for irrigation purposes and ele- electrical purpose irrigation purpose and, and for electricity but uh, among among those dams sardar sarovar dam is regarded as the biggest it's in uh, it's in Nar- Nar- narmada river but in gujarat not in maharashtra or, or in madhya pradesh so that is mo- that's why this movement is primarily again in sardar sarovar dam now it's already the the our prime minister narendra modi inaugurated narmada sardar sarovar dam in 3 years back but the even though this dam came but the, this movement was primarily against it it started in early 1980s just have to remember this started in early 1980s because the problem that when these dams came then lots of people you know like especially so, so many people lost their you know the habitation because the the water they they land go under water so they they their houses go, b- 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 get you know submerged so the the initial demand of this movement was uh, they demanded like uh, rehabilitation for the people who lost their land the who lost their ha- land and who lost their accommodation why okay because then again the significant number of people who live in uh, narmada valley belongs to uh, the marginal sections of people like adivasis so they don't have any sort of like uh, idea what they will do if they, their land is going under if the the you know like uh, plan is going to happen like uh, the the the, the our, this pro- project is going to took place what what happened that they will lose their habitation they will lose their habitation so they don't know what to do so this movement started primarily for rehabilitating rehabilitating the people 
who are getting homeless then government has to give them some sort of compensation they have government has to fund government can simply remove millions of people from Narmada basin but they have to the government should have a concrete plan the government should guarantee people that they should get rehabilitated properly they should get rehabilitated properly then they also receive some sort of compensation because their you know their, their entire villages or entire you know the, the accommodation their their houses their other sort of you know like uh, how do they survive everything is going under water if the narmada sorry the, the narmada dam project is going to take place so sardar narmada bachava nandolan's the primary criteria was rehabilitating people who are going homeless as part of this project this movement was led by just you have to remember one more thing the people who live in narmada basin or the people who are getting affected primarily from marginalized section especially adivasi dalits and others other poor section other other poor people do, they don't know much about human rights and other fundamental rights of things so the the people uh, the but the one who led or the one who organized this narmada bachav andolan is none other than veda patkar she is regarded as one of the major social activist of independent india she was born in bombay but she led the movement she is not from uh, narmada valley but she was born in bombay she is an urban urban lady educated urban lady but she led she led the movement she she tried to convince people about the significance of narmada then then the the, the you know like uh, they uh, she was kind of intermediary between the you know like uh, and then uh, co commoners and you know then commoners and government so government struggle government can't they they, they move to court several time then it got stuck up then government government struggle to you know the proceed with movement anyway uh, the movement is primarily against i already i made the point against the construction of sardar sarovar dam the movement initiated then other thing the development model debate development model debate i already mentioned before because the people like meda patkar and other uh, uh, human right activists they, they social activists then they, they stood for sustainable development not for the the, the normal uh, mass scale development you know they they were against dams they were against dams and construction of the big dams because it's not only in india in all over the world there is concern about making of big dams because it's a, it's an artificial thing it's naturally uh, it naturally affect you know like uh, so many things naturally affect the flow of river then uh, fish fish wealth and that. so it negatively affect the lives of people who are depending on big rivers because narmada is a, there is a civilization which developed uh, on the shores of Mar Narmada because it's not a simple thing, it's not a simple river, just like Ganga, just like Ganga or Brahmaputra, there is an ecosystem related to the Narmada river. If there is a dam like Sardar Sarovar dam came into being, then it all affect the natural flow of water, the na it naturally affect the fish wealth, then then the people who, the, the, the fishmongers then, or uh, the, the fishermen, so many people are getting affected by it. So, uh, here is a photo like uh, Medha Patkar is here, he, she, he, she, here she is, then other activists, they are all villagers, then they do, this is Narmada river, they do some like uh, Dharna, Dharna kind of thing, some strike. So, uh, let's see who is a Medha Patkar, the, but you have to understand that the Sardar Sarova Dam, you know, like uh, the Narmada Pachavan Andolan is not that successful like Chipko movement because Sardar Sarova, any, anyhow, uh, the government made Sardar Sarovar Dam, the, the Narendra Modi inaugurated three years back, but government was forced to give some sort of like a rehabilitation plan for uh, villagers and others like Adivasis and others. They have to give, they are forced to give some, some sort of compensation. If Medha Patkar and others were not there, I don't, I, we doubt it may not happen. Let's see, let's see who is Medha Patkar. You can't simply avoid her. Medha Patkar is a major figure behind our Narmada Bachava Andolan, she's a social activist I already made. She was born in Bombay. Now she is still alive. She is very active. One of the founders of National Alliance of People Movement, NAPM, because she is one of the founders of National Alliance of People Movement. It happened in 1984. Then there are the, the National Alliance of People Movement speaker. There are several movements in different parts of India, even in Assam, even in Andhra Pradesh, different parts, even in Karnataka, different parts of India relates with, uh, you know, like, uh, and relates with environment and other sort of environmental exploitation and other sorts of exploitation. There are hundreds of movements. So she is a founder. There is an alliance between various movements. She is a founder, one of the founders of National Alliance of People's Movement, which happened in 1984. Then due to her contribution, just like Sundarlal Bahuguna Mehta became a global figure. Uh, so 
she she got wider attention she got global recognition then she is again is the construction of big dams because her concern that not only sardar sarovar dam she is in general again is the construction of big dam she believed in sustainable development because the construction of big dam naturally uh, destroyed all the you know the river ecosystems so uh, there are fellow thinkers just like her in different parts of world but in india in those days in 1980s only narmada was a because people were here the development we is big dam that was our perception so in, in 1980s but uh, there are fellow thinkers in uh, developed part of world in the especially in the western europe and the usa so they made her commissioner on the world commissioner dam there was a commission world commissioner dam uh, that world commission she they she become she was this world commission dam was like um, made by un but she was a commissioner because she is regarded as one of the expert in this case because she led a movement basis of it so she was a commissioner on the world commission dam she got the recognition she got that you know the global acclaim just like bahuguna she also recipient of several awards such as like a right lively god award goldman environment award green ribbon award human rights defenders award so many awards relates with all relates with her services to humanity and growth then uh, but you have to remember one more thing this movement was not that successful because government was somehow managed because only this movement did two things the it extend like uh, it forced government to do something for the one who become homeless due to the implementation of the project then government become very cautious about uh, you know like meta particular suggestions otherwise government so it It, it, the, still this movement is going on the, still this movement is going on even though the sardar sarovar dam came into came into effect because that construction com- got completed but uh, government was forced to you know like um, reduce its height but it's 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 fun- now it's become fully functional uh, narendra modi inaugurated it in two three years back in 2018 but the the the, the one who become homeless the world co- came into their you know, came into their you know like peril so the government was supposed to give them some sort of comp- compensation and uh, re- rehabilitation you know like a project because government was forced to do it otherwise we don't know what will happen then so the meda patkar got credit of it but it's not like chipko moment she was not that or she or her comrades were not you know like uh, successful in blocking entirely blocking uh, narmada dam projects okay especially the sardar sarovar dam okay then students we it's better to stop here here in this in this part we have seen uh, the i discussed like uh, three major human rights movement in the post independence india that is the people's union for civil liberties there is a general uh, human rights movement then two environment based human rights movement the third generation human rights movement it is the one is chipko and the another one is narmada bachao andolan we discuss all so uh, thanks for your patience then uh, again thanks for your cooperation then your patience and your you know like attention then i stop here then have a nice day